Hallelujah. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, before I proceed in my preaching of my testimony, I have not come alone. Amen. I have come with my rib, or bone of my bone, or flesh of my flesh. This is my wife, Bernadette Mingochi. Come and greet the congregation. Hallelujah. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you, our bishop, the owner of this church, for working together with our mother, Inonge Nawa, the founder of Matthew 25 International Ministry. As the bishop has already said, even me, it was not in my mind. But I was just called by Martha to come here. When I went to her, that's when now she told me about this, what is going on in this place. And I thank our mother Inonge for preparing all this to bring me here to stand in the midst of you great men and women of God. And I thank God himself, the creator, to bring me here as well. I didn't know, not even one day, that I shall come and stand in front of people like this. Or to speak to people as I am speaking now. But because of God, I am here. So I say thank you our God, and I thank you, all the members of this church. Amen. Amen. Uh, the theme of today, that is, disability is ability. Disability is ability. Why? First thing, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I say thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I am here because of you. Without you, I cannot afford, I will not be able to come to such a place. Before I go any further in our prayers, Lord, I stand on your word. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 4. As we have assembled, as we have come together in this place in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I ask him, the Holy Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be with us. He's our helper. Let him help us to start with us and end with us. Lord, I commit this day into your hands. I commit the entire service into your hands. From now until we finish our program. Heavenly Father, I commit this nation of Zambia I commit this African continent, I commit the entire world into your hands. Wherever your people are this time, listening to this ceremony, Lord, open their ears and hear your word. Open their eyes and see the Lord in their midst. Stretch out your hand and, Father, touch each of them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, start with us and end with us. God, I commit everything into your hands. I know that I'm not alone. I'm with you, the Holy Spirit of the living God. As your word is on my tongue and the spirit you are speaking to me, speak to your people and to those who are there. Father, I commit the whole program into your hands with thanksgiving from our hearts in Jesus, my pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I have already said that the theme of this Sunday it's about disability is ability. Some people, they'll say, why? Because they know a person who is a disability, they know who he is or who he is. 
And how can he be ability? Uh, a disability is a person who is not able to do anything on his own. Maybe a blind person, he has eyes but he cannot see. Maybe a deaf, he has ears but he cannot hear. Maybe a dumb, he has a mouth and tongue but the tongue is stuck. It cannot utter any word to produce a voice so that other people, they can hear what he's speaking. There are people who are lepers, who suffer from the disease of leprosy. You find them, they are losing their fingers, maybe losing their ears, maybe toes, and the path is coming out of their body. There are people who are lame. They have legs, but you find their legs, it is paralyzed. They cannot walk. They are not able to walk. Some, they have no hands, but they are there. It's a disabled or a handicapped or a disability. There are people who are albi albinos or people living with albinism. Like myself, as I'm here standing in your front. That's why I'm here. I want to share this. I know that there are people who have their children, who have their relatives living together with them. But they don't put more much of their minds to them. Then there's a disability, another disability. Orphans. You find the father and the mother, they are no longer there, they are dead. Because a child, he depends upon the parents. Whatever he needs, he should ask the father or the mother, mother, give me this, dad, give me this. But the moment he loses these people, he has nowhere to go. Although relatives are there, it's very difficult to look after that child. And you find their growth, it's not normal. Other, other side of the part of their life, they are disability. What about widows who depends upon the husband? You find the husband is dead. Who was providing all the breadwinner in that house? So now the, the mother, he will start struggling with the children. For, him, for her to bring those children up, it's difficult. He struggled. So you find the other hand. It's not there that was helping her to gather the children. So you find that the woman should become what? A disabled. Amen? I have just a short message, and then on top of this message, I will give a testimony about myself and my wife. That's why today I've come together with her. The theme of today, it's disability is ability. I've already said a disability, someone who is not able to do anything, a handicapped, that's a disability. And you know them very well. I think you have seen some of these people. Maybe some you are living with them in your homes, in your houses. But they are able to do something again. In other hand. Amen. Amen. Are, are we together? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. That a disabled person can do something? Yes. Ah. Uh, who can read for me? Anyone who is very speed and accurate to read. I will support the message with the second Kings. Second Kings chapter seven, verse three. Anyone with the Bible, you can read it for us. Chapter seven, verse three.
Read up to verse 16. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. This message I have divided in two ways. One, I am looking at verse 3. These lepers, they were at the gate. Not inside the camp, but outside the camp. They were outcast. They were rejected. Because of leprosy. Hallelujah. Now, because of leprosy, these people inside the camp, they decided to take them away from the camp. That if we live together with them, this disease, it will also spread to us. That was the major reason. Now, what I'm looking here is about rejection. Rejection. 
People have children who are blind. People have children who are deaf and dumb. People have children who are lame. People have children who are albinos. But you find these people, they don't live together with them. They have outcast them. They have rejected them. Hallelujah. Some marriages have broken because of such children. You find a man who ran away from the wife or the wife will run away from man because of that child. Where I come from, as we don't have such people. How come today I have a lame child? This is not my child. Now go. You find the marriage has broken. I think this is the thing that we have experienced. Amen. I think we have seen this maybe among our relatives, among our friends, from other people, in the cities, in the towns, in the nations, in the villages and compounds. About rejection of the disabled people or handicapped people or disability people. Now, when we look in verse 3, I am coming again to the side of the disabled people, disability people. These lepers, when they were outside the gate, because of famine or hunger that was in that camp, they were not quiet. They opened their mouth and speak. We cannot stay here. Hallelujah. We cannot stay here. Although we are lepers, we cannot stay here. If we mean to go inside the camp, we will die because of hunger. Again, if we go to the camp of the Syrians, they will kill us. But the good part that I am looking at is about the decision which they made. They made the decision. Not only decision, they risked their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. They risked their life. Because they decided to go to the camp of the Syrians where there was food. We cannot live, if we live at this gate, we will die. If we go inside the camp, we will die because there's what? Famine. So it's better to go to the camp of Syrians where there's food. If they mean to kill us, let them kill us. It's okay. Decision making. It's very important. I'm not looking at the, at the disabled or disabilities, no. Even to the normal people who are like you. What is your decision? What have you come up with in your life? Because these people, they didn't look at their lame side, no. But they said, no. If we mean to die where we are going, let them kill us. It's fine. There are people who don't make decisions in their lives. Although things are worse, things are out of their hand, it's fine. They are in the comfort zone. It's okay. Ah, let me stay. No problem. No. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Make a decision. Think. Come up with something. What can I do? What can you do? When the problem comes. Hallelujah. Yes. You find these lepers, they risked 
their life to go to the camp of the Syrians. What about us today? Do we risk our lives? Do we risk our lives? God is telling to you, move from Lusaka, go to Copper Belt, where you can get something there. But so that, mm, how can I go? Because I have no relatives, I have no friend. How am I going to live? Hallelujah. Yes. You find your marriage is not in Lusaka, your marriage is somewhere. Your job is not in Lusaka, your job is somewhere. But you are failing to make a decision because you are looking at the relatives. Because you are looking at the friends. Who can help me when I'll go there? Who can do this for me when I'll be there? But these lepers, it was not like that. Amen? It was not like that. We have to make a decision. Sit down and think twice about yourself. What can I do? I usually tell people that if the problem has come upon you, no matter how you can cry, complaining, or do what and what, from 0, 06 up to 18 hours, it will not help you. Unless you stand up and you start seeking something. And you start doing something. That's when that problem, it will finish. Hallelujah. So these lepers, they didn't wait for somebody to tell them that to go to the Syrians camp. No, it was on their own. Because of the situation in which they are. You know, men and women of God, or children of God, hunger is not something that you can play with. <laughs> it's the situation that I've passed through. Amen? I had to go maybe for three days, four days without food. And you cannot go anywhere to, help, to, to ask for help. A member and a man of God is different. You just kneel with down and start praying, start crying to your God. God, what can I do? God, what can I eat? God, what can I do? Until the door is opened. <laughs> Amen. Hunger, it's not something that you can play with, no. That's why people, they steal. Because of hunger. Amen. That's why these lepers, because of hunger, it was difficult for them to stay at the camp, of, at the gate of that camp, outside where they outcasted them. They said, no, let us move. They moved. Hallelujah. They moved. Now see, when they made a decision, when they risked their lives, the moment they started walking toward the, toward the camp of the Syrian soldiers. Now, what happened to the Syrian soldiers? The Bible has told us that what? At those soldiers, they heard what? The sound of their foot. As if it was what? Aha. Uh -huh. You know, if people they are mending, they are walking. You cannot hear this. You cannot hear one sound of a person. No. They are men. This is what they heard. These Syrians. The moment they heard that sound, these Syrians they ran away. They left everything. They left food. They left money. Because the Bible says they even left what silver and gold. That is money. They left. 
For the sake of who? For the sake of what? For the lepers to survive. Hallelujah. Take a decision in your life. The, the, time, the time that you make a decision and you stand up, okay, let me now go. The first thing you have to put in your mind, when you are starting walking, you are not alone. When you are a son of God or a daughter of God, you have to know that as I am walking, I am with my God. But many believers, they don't know this. I am alone. But with these lepers, it was not like that. That sound which the Syrians heard, it was not the foot of the lepers, no. It was the foot of whom? Of God. When they reached the camp, they found those people are not there. The camp was empty. What happened now when they found it? The camp was empty. They ate. Hallelujah. They ate to satisfy themselves. The Bible, as she was reading, Mia was following. The Bible says that they moved from one tent to another tent. Eating. It was celebration. It was a good day for them. Hallelujah. Make a decision. Start walking. Risk your life. Then you get what you want to get in your life. Minus that you cannot see it. Hallelujah. Amen. Disability is ability. Hallelujah. So these lepers, they didn't say that because we are disability, let us stay. No, they moved. If you have a son, if you have a daughter or a relative who is a disabled, help him or her to start moving. Hallelujah. To start moving. From where she is, from where he is. To another point. Help him or her. So that also she can do. Or he can do something. In his life. Or in her life. Hallelujah. But he's a disabled. I know. When you are rejected. It depends. It depends. Who have gone through that? Who have gone through rejection? That's a disappointment, eh? Yes. You find maybe a wife will reject you, or a husband will reject you. <laughs> you are staying with her, you are staying with him. You have not yet finished your love with him or her. That's when she can make it say that you no, know, today I'm going to her home. Are we together? That's why I said, no, me, I'm leaving this place. I'm going to our parents. <laughs> now, as you remain alone, you start thinking, oh, my God, why? I have not yet finished my love with him. Now she's going, why, my God, why? That's a rejection. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is the thing that people are passing through in their homes. May the Holy Spirit to work. Yes. 
So you find sons and daughters of God. It's not an easy thing. It's very tough. It's very difficult. It depends. Rejection. People have rejected their children, their relatives. People have rejected their daughters. Hallelujah. And their fathers, their mothers. Because my mother, she's lame. My father, he's blind. Now him or her, she's now driving Mercedes Benz, Prado, whatever it is. Now we see the one who brought him or her on earth. She's useless or he is useless to him or to her. That's not the way. Hallelujah. Amen. Disability is ability. Now, I am looking second part of ability. Of, the, of, of, of a person with a disability. What can he do? Or what can she do? We are coming now to verse 9. These lepers, they say that it is not good what we are doing. It's not right what we are doing. Amen? Let us go and tell them to come and eat what you have eaten. To come and pick what you have picked. Hallelujah. The Bible says after eating from one tent to another tent, after gathering things, the, as she was reading, she, was, she said that those lepers, they took some of those things to go and hide. Amen? That is their what? Things. Then later on, they think to us that no, 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 no. What we are doing is not right. Let us go and tell the normal people. Those who rejected them. Those who disappointed them. Those who casted them out of the camp. Let us go and tell them. So that also they can come and eat. So that they can come and pick what you have picked in this camp of Syrians. Hallelujah. That is the ability of the disability. They went. They told the gatekeepers, tell the king, Syrians are not there. As we are from there, we have even eaten and we have even picked some. We have even hidden them. Let's go. Also, you will eat and pick some there. But uh, the king started doing what? The king started murmuring, no, maybe these people, they will kill us. No, it's just a snare or a trap that they have made. So, uh, no, us, we cannot go there. But I like those king's workers. One of them said, no, 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 king. Let us send someone there to go and spy, to see what is there. They send a person or two persons to go and see the Syrian camp. And for sure, when they reached the camp, they found those Syrians are not there. What happened? They came back to bring the report to the king. These, these lepers, what they have said, it is true. Let's go. And the Bible says, those people in the camp, they came out, the normal ones. They went to the camp of the Syrians. They ate also. They picked. The Bible says they plundered them. Hallelujah. Uh, the word to plunder, it means it's like not even to leave anything there. Isn't it? Yes. To get everything. They brought their things in their camp. 
of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Yes. Now I am looking at the camp of I'm looking at the at the point of ability. So these lepers they played a role of ability. They helped the normal people. Hallelujah. When you have your child, when you have your son, your daughter, or your relatives, don't cast out him or her. No. Look after him. Take care for him. Because you don't know one day or another is going to help you. He or she is going to bring something good for you. Of which many people they don't know. He's lame. What can he do? What can she do? But these lepers, they gave food to the normal people. They ate. But they were lepers. Are we together? Because those lepers, if they didn't move from the gate where they used to stay, even those normal people inside the camp of the children of Israel, they could have not eaten that food. So God knows how he helps us people. Most of the time it's not direct, but indirect help. Hallelujah. So it was indirect. Because them they, they outcasted them. They think that these people they are finished. They cannot do anything. But God is not like that. God is not like a man. That's why I like Isaiah 59 verse Isaiah 53 verse 8 and 9. God said that your thoughts and your ways are not like my thoughts and my ways. God said that my thoughts and my ways are like from heaven to earth. The way we think, that's not the way God thinks. The way we walk, that's not the way God walks. Hallelujah. Yes. God is God. So these disabled people, they helped the normal people. It was indirect help. Of which it was not in the mind of the children of Israel that these lepers, they will look after us. They rescued them. Even us, as we are having our children, as we are having our relatives, take care for them. Don't despise them. Hallelujah. Don't despise them. Take care for them. Because that child you are having, that daughter you are having, that relative you are having, you don't know when God is going to perform a miracle, a wonder, a sign in him or her, and you are going to benefit from such a person. So this is what happened to the children of Israel. What about us today? What are we thinking with those people we are living within our homes, in our houses? Those lame people, people living with albinism, blind, deaf, whom we are counting that they cannot do anything. That is the end of their life. But God is saying that it's not yet over. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the message that God gave me about disability is ability. Now I am coming to my third point of the message of God. This is now about my testimony. Hallelujah. It's about my testimony. The same sister, where are you? Can you read for me? 
Come to the book of Psalms 119 verse 2. Psalms 119 verse 2. Only verse 2. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So as I'm standing in front of you, I'm not standing in your midst, I am blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Me, I am blessed because I keep the testimony of God. I have seen what God has done in my life. That's why today I'm here for a purpose. Hallelujah. I tell people that the English I speak, it's not mine, it's for God. It's God's English. It's not for me. My testimony goes like this. I was in the village, typical, interior. Of which it was not even in my mind that one day I shall be in town like the way it is now. You know, when someone you are living in the rural areas and then you have no one in town, to come in town is very difficult. Not so. Yes. Unless you have an access. If you have a friend or a relative, then you can be found to that place. Some have born in villages and have died in villages. Uh, my testimony goes this way. I did my grade 1 up to grade 7 in the village. Rural areas. I sat for my grade 7 exam. I passed my grade 7 to be in grade 8. Unfortunately, part was, by that time, my father was alive and my mother was alive. But now I am no longer with them. They are dead. May their souls rest in peace. My father was a bricklayer. He used to build houses, government buildings. The time I passed my grade 7 to be in grade 8, my father told me that I have no money to give you. The reason is because I'm an albino. I cannot do anything. These people, they are not educated. These people, they cannot do anything. Because even the separation of my mother and my father, which brought them up to divorce because of me and my brother. In our family, we are two. The one who follows me, he is also an albino. The time I was born, to the family of my father, they were talking, but not very much. Later, my brother also, he was born with the same color like me. Now, talking rose to the side of my father's family. Why this woman giving you such children? To us it's taboo. We don't have such, such people in our family. Divorce this woman. So that you can get another woman. Who can give you black children? Divorce happened. My father divorced my mother. When they divorced, they shared the children. I, I remained with my father. I was brought up by my grandmother and my grandfather. Not my father, no. Because my father married another woman with a stepmother. So now to me it was very difficult to live in his house because of that woman. What, what, used to, what used to be this? When you go, when I would go to, to, to the father's house, 
You find that one said, don't touch my cup. Don't touch anything. Don't do anything here. Because if I will touch that cup, they will also become an albinos. When you are eating, that woman, that woman, the stepmother, she came with her own children. You find the relish, it is put on the dish. Same food, but they have their own plate where that relish is. But with me, they will put relish in my hands. This is the situation that I passed through. That said that the rejection is very so painful. Hallelujah. Yes. That party passed. And because of that, that's the thing that contributed even to my education. The father refused to give me money to go to grade 8. I have no money to give you. Because what was in his mind said that these people, they are not educated. These people, they don't do anything. Just leave him like that. You know, people of God, I cried. I stayed the whole day without eating. Just crying. Why? Then I started asking myself, God, did you just take me to school that uh, I shall be saying that I was once at school? Or you have a purpose for me why you took me to school so that also I shall do something in my life. That's why I've said that take a, take a risk in your life. Amen? Then you have said that make a decision in your life. It helps. I started thinking. Then later said that no. This is not the end of my life. I have to do something within myself. I went to a certain man within the village. And this man, he was working in Loloma, Loloma Hospital. Mission. I said to sir, can you give me a peace work? I need peace work so that I can buy uniform on my own. That man, he didn't refuse. He gave me one lima of cassava to remove grass. Hallelujah. In our own language, we say that uku sequila. I started cleaning that field, one limb of cassava. After cleaning that cassava field, I was given money. I went to the shop, I bought shirt, I bought trousers, I bought necktie, even a part of books, but I have no shoes. Then said that no. How can I go to school without shoes? Uniform I've bought this and this, but no shoes. Again, to look for another piece of work. To get man so that they can buy shoes, but my friends are doing what? Are ah, learning. No. I decided. I made a decision. Let me go to my auntie, to the sister of my mother. And it was very far from my father's home to her sister's home. It's very far. Walking, it was about three hours walking. Let her just buy shoes for me so that I can continue with my education. I started early in the morning. Walking, 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 walking. Until nine hours. Then I was tired. I said, oh, no, let me, re let me rest. Just near the road, the main road, of the vehicles. I sat at a stone resting. 
Now, while I was resting, I saw two sisters, a Zambian sister and a Catholic sister, coming from the side where I was going. Those sisters, when they came, they reached where I sat resting. The first thing before calling me, they started to talk to each other. After talking, then that Zambian sister, she called me, come here. I moved where I sat to go to them. Then that white sister from Italy, by the name of Sister Rosalinda, then she said, this is the child that God has given me. I'll go with her to educate her. And you know that time there was a rumor of saying that there are people who are moving hearts of people, who are killing people. And it was my first time to meet that person. Then they said, follow us. I started following them up to Kapembe Mission of the Catholic Church there. They have a hospital there. They gave me a chair. I sat down. Just for a few minutes, then they told me, go into that room and take a bath. I went into the room. I took my bath. After taking my bath, I just saw a, a man bringing new clothes. Shoes, socks, pants, everything. Can you put on, on these new clothes? Those clothes bring them here. I thought that maybe they are going to wash them. <laughs> Yet it's not. They burned those clothes in my presence. I was watching, burning those clothes which were on my body. After burning those clothes, they gave me food. I ate after eating food. Then that white man, a Catholic sister, I mean that woman, then she asked me, where is your home? Where is your father? Let's start from here, going to, play, to the place of our father. It's very far. Then she said, I cannot go with you without permission from your father because... If the government finds me that I've taken you without the permission, they will arrest me. They said I've stolen a child. I have to get permission from your father. They said, no problem, we can go. I said, okay, let's go. I jumped on, on the vehicle. We came on the road. Start now driving towards, the, towards our place where our father was. Now, as we were, dri as we were driving, uh, uh, moving, I just saw a man from afar cycling. I said, sister, at yes, I'm the one who's coming there. It's like my father. At how do you know him? That is my father. And it was for sure. When we reached nearby, when we reached him, I said, this is my father. I said, oh, this is good. She stopped the vehicle. She came out of the vehicle to start speaking to my father. The moment my father saw me in that vehicle, my father started crying. Have you stolen? I mean, no. Maybe you have taken, you have taken other people's things. I am mean, no. So the sister said, no, I want to get your child. I want to go with him. I want to educate him. Just there, that sister, she wrote her address. She gave my father. And my father wrote his address and gave the sister. We turned, going back to the mission. And we started packing things. And I can recall very well, we left the place around 12 hours from Kabompo, Maninga, northwestern province, coming to town. That is in Russia. That was my first time to know town. <laughs> Amen. From rural to urban. 
That's what God can do. When I reached Russia, I mean Russia there, I spent two days, if I can recall well. Now she prepared everything for me. She brought me to Ndola, he Christ. Those who have been in Ndola, where there's a roundabout of the road going to Mufulila. There's a compound there called Hikrist there. And there's a school there. That's where uh, I did my grade 8 and my grade 9. Fortunate, I did well. I passed my grade 9 to grade 10. That was not the end of the story. Then the sister said, no. You have pleased me. I will take you to Munali Secondary School. She brought me to Munali Secondary School. That's why I did my grade 10, 11, and 12. After finishing my grade 12, I can say that the time I was in grade 12, he said that in the, in the second term, that next, next term we are writing final exam for grade 12. That sister, Ronda, that sister Rosarinda, her contract came to an end in Zambia. She went back to Italy. I proceeded with my school until I finished. After finishing, I went to home to my parents. Now there I did a training teacher. I taught for two years. They said that uh, no. May I cannot be a teacher, I don't want. Because I saw the salary by that time. Mm. <laughs> the way teacher they were surviving said, ah oh, no. This career, no. No, you are good in teaching. What and was I no? Oh, no. Now what do you want to do? I Me, mean, I want to do automotive mechanics. To cut the story short, God gave me another man from America. That is Brother Andrew. Again, he's a Catholic. That Brother Andrew, he paid for me for two years for my mechanics career in Sores, headquarters of Northwestern Province. I did my career there as an automotive mechanics for two years. After finishing, I got my certificate of automotive mechanics, that is G5, which I got. Then I went to Kasanshi Mine. By that time, that's when they were privatizing the mines. They said that, no, we, can employ, we cannot employ you because we need to give you a vehicle, we need to give you a house, even a salary. So now, if you want to work with us, just wait for two years, let us settle. Then after two years come, then we employ you. They said, no, I cannot do it. I left Northwestern Province coming to Copper Belt. When I came to Copper Belt, the first company that I worked, it was Nissan Motors. After working with Nissan Motors, Stuma said, ah, no, I'm not satisfied. I left Copper Belt. I came to Lusaka. When I came to Lusaka, I worked for Flash Motors for three years. That's when now the calling of God started. That the time after, li after leaving Flash Motors Company, that's when now I met our mother in Ongewina, in a PHI. I started now going to our mother, praying together with her, worshiping together with her. From there, we went even to Avondale to Bishop Jordan Siame. Mother Inonga left me there. She came back. I have remained with the Bishop Siam. Now, Bishop Siam also is the one who groomed, me, who groomed me in the things of God. He even took me to school for pastoring. After that, I got my certificate of pastoring up to now. Why I have given this testimony People, they despise disability people. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm a disability. 
But I took a decision. I took a risk in my life. Are we together? That's why today here I am, and I'm able to stand in front of you. If I didn't, I think this time even the bishop, I could have not known him. I am very pleased, Bishop, my father, to meet you. Thank you. I can recall that there was the first time that I came here with Mother Inonge. There was food, what they prepared. I can recall that. I didn't know that I shall come here and stand in the front of the audience and preach to them. So I am very, very happy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good all the time. That's how God works. So I beg you, sons and daughters of God, don't cast them out, those people whom God has given you to live with. One day or another, they are going to do something that will please you. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, before I'll close, I have my wife that she wants to give you a testimony. Just a short one. The way she got married with me. Hallelujah. You are welcome. Come and share something. It's my will. Uh -uh. It's the will of God. The people talk about me that she's a mad. Yes. Nishu ya wingo pula kumwa umyoyo. Takwe tenangu fimo. Hilo mwa mwa nakashu musuma. Hilo tuwa lelonga na kumu tendele. Na alite menu kupipa. Then my husband. Bale pipa kukaranda soka. Mwako bale kwa tama prayers. The first time na ambilo kuika la kumu tendele. Na ambilo kuipusha wa neba. Na chitakuli yoko ba pipa ma prayers kuno ya chipente. Because na alite mwa kupipa ya chipente. Baby they know. There is somewhere there. Not please. Therefore, I'm on to a leko. Hilo wa ishire nitu ala kulia. Kwa alewa avantu. Kwa alewa avale fuma kukopa beodi. Kwisa muku pepoko kwini. Andile sa ale mofinga paliri anshita. Na ino ini ale mofinga. Vantu ba ale pola. Awa ashe ale nda ba ale nda. And in a little man of no mutimawadi, she why is she a masuka fe kuroku paper? If an ambido and de bombaco, he have all made in day and de bombaco of Ningana, you can speed kuma prayers. If you to ambido ku paper, and every Tuesday to a lequata pray and fasting. Elo to a le longana could you have and to having pray and fasting, pray and fasting. And the same ambido ku social and to mulamino ma prayers at the ano. They sale for a lay folk pillar of a bosa of woman a cash. Babusa, but no, no, let us abandon that prayer. Let us focus. <laughs> prayer, prayer, prayer. Andy, it's not in my mind to get married to that one. No, why you are very black in our So <laughs> when we pray. <laughs> Ina tuwale pepa. Ngaba ambo kupepa tuwale kukana laini. Ina kubi kako. Umbi ukuisa kuliaba. Nga nine wontiti mku ya kupepe li laba. Na kuliaba blaki na tia. <laughs> Shire yako. So. Ino na pepe li lakuli wale wale mpepe li laba blaki. Kusange fintu is very tough. Kunchito wale ya mku kukali pila fye. Wati andi wati. God. First, in the shake of Kuria Valley, Valavala, and Pepe de Lago. 
Nganda ba mpepele la na ya fintu fya chiti ka kunchi to bale ku pele ndalama. Na mbo ku ipisha na tu mwele sa ono baba ya ine ya ai. Ai ai. No mani shi fi shi file chiti ka so. If I am it's not in my intention ku tiku ku pakuli aba. So one day dey to alive pange for fine na chi landelo le sai shi le ya mbo ku moving. Process, process. Ah, umu ana kashire saba pedi ya alimu kona afuere cha bula. Nuntu yibonse hata tuwa biri tu alimu kona yanganda so. Umu na nti na ina alimu kona. Ba mbo kui pisha na niwa afuere cha bula niwa sister Benandeti na ba mbiwa mui kala kusaba sister Benandeti ba udia watindi kala kungombi. Ba tu umu ana kashia saba pedi ya wai kala ku ku kalinga linga na ni sura kona malo ni ndosha nuka. Inga imo ba sister Ben and Eti na tinji kala kwa kalinga linga. Elo ba tota vanto muto ni muche iti ni shine. Ning kali pa shine fwano kufwaya. Changuila. Awe na ina. Teti nande mubantu awe. Nati mumuti ma iya hii. Iya hii mumuti. Na plosesi yama plesi. Tuwa mbilo kukonka nyapo kupepa. Tuwa pepa tuwa mpaka tuwa puisha. Tuwa na kungandu wa sister Ben and Eti mshari leko. Na shari la fida. Ah. Kani sindi mo ya animolo ngonje mwa festing pepelepo, festing pepelepo sindi si mamolo nguma mene asakambi la nizako yangu ni festi time, efo na ile wante na mweleza, ni shiba ba mami na familia ndiwa kanje ba shani, kupa kumuntu hava so, ah we shwa, fio na ambiyo kupe pana pe pana chumweleza, how can I accept this? Dabu for me, hmm? Nangu abantu bala mo na shani. Ah, pule ya pule na ikaram fasting, and God visited me in the dream. Do you want to please people or do you want to please me? Come on. Oh God, this question is very hard. My God. Shaya sui kena la la the following day, and the following day, you don't know the food. You don't know the same one. Then the mama flowers, very greeny. Then the ababa di kuntanish. Mama flowers, ya suma ukuno kwe then the Lord pagati. Then when I meet him in the dream, I feel very peace. Even in anguni problemo, takuadi. But in shindi mo udanis. Even in apa kui kalansha le shakwete. Even in apa kula lansha shakwete. When I wake up, I said, "Oh God, I want to please you, not a man." And if, for sure, na chinga na mind. Jebel, I don't want no matter how people saying about me, I don't care. If you na ambido kumoving na baba ome. And you passed through challenges and challenges. Through challenges and challenges. Don't even go. Don't even number. Ukukutumina kwa bantu family. No. Kwa tife mwalife babidi. Mchalo. I wish we are there. I wish we are there. The people talk. The people talk mwe. She is mad. She is mad. She is not normal. I think they can bring him to China, so that they can examine her brain. And my family talking me, very landire. Ah, if I tell you, I'm very attached. She, I was chasing her because she was up a curio yomuntu. Natima, uyu emu amele sampele. Kuti na chita shani. Andile samwe, mukulu, pala ifiye su. And God is doing a miracle things in our life. That's my testimony.